Hello, I'm Bonnie, and this is our member highlight series where we interview our top developers from Angular Nation. And today we have Mateos Carniato, and we call him Matt. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Bonnie. I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to have you. Okay, so uh, this is just kind of for people to get to know uh, some of our developers from Angular Nation, some of the people that I've gotten to know over the years, and I want other people to get to know you. So I'm just going to ask you questions. Uh, but first, before we get started, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm a Brazilian, um, born and raised. Uh, I recently moved to Belgium, live in Brussels. Um, I've been working quite some time with development. And yeah, that's what I love to do. Nowadays, I'm a core team member of uh, NGXS and organizer of NGB. And my neighbor. Well, not really my yeah. neighbor, but it's... Netherlands close. and Belgium are close together. Okay, so uh, let's start out with, uh, did you ever think that you weren't cut out to be a developer? And I always ask this because I actually went through that in the very beginning when I first started and I, I thought I was very intimidated. Did you ever go through that when you first started? That's a very interesting question, actually, because um, I was influenced by my dad since I was very young. I started coding, I was 13. So I think I never stopped to think about that because I just love it and keep doing it until went to college and became a profession. So I don't think I ever stopped to think I'm not going to be a developer. I cannot even see myself not being a developer nowadays. Maybe it's like uh, when you learn something, you know, like if you learn a foreign language so young, then you just always knew how to speak it. Yeah, I think I think uh, it, it's even tricky because it's a thing that I do since I was very young. So for me, it's quite coding is something that I do always, even as a hob, hobby. So yeah, I think I, I, I never stopped to think like maybe I should do something else. I think that's great. I didn't start until I was like 30 something. So it was hard. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is there anyone along the way who, who helped you or made a difference when, uh, when you were first starting out? Several people, actually. I, I was very lucky. Uh, I think uh, I can remember from the top of my head, three people that really changed uh, my trajectory as a developer. Uh, first, my dad, because he really pushed me into it. Uh, I my first uh, senior developer, like my first tech lead, was Alex Alessandro Germer. Also, still in Brazil, he helped me a lot. He teach me everything that I, uh, he knew back then. And you, Bonnie. <laughs> uh, I mean, I met you. I met you in Angular Connect, and this changed everything. Um, you, I, I was waiting for someone to give me permission to start doing something bigger than just working nine to five. And you gave this permission. Oh, well, that's so great. I'm happy to hear that. And yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I want people to participate more in the community because when I started participating and when I started meeting people at conferences and, and I started, it was just so much easier for me to ask for help once I was already hanging out with these people and I, you know, had, had, uh, had that rapport. And so I want more people to do that. So and plus, you were so cool. I met you, and you were so friendly, and uh, and so it was really great to introduce you to people. And now you're on the core team of NGXS, and you're doing all this stuff. And so, and now you're in a position to help other people. And you know, that's how we grow. I think that's great. Yeah, I think in the beginning I was friendly because I was just super excited to meet you and other big developers. Back then, I, I met Igor Minarik thanks to you as well. And yeah, I, I was just like amazed with the whole experience. I was amazed too the first time I met Igor. He's so nice. He's really a nice person. Okay, uh, more questions. What do you listen to when you're coding? Do you have like a programming playlist? Yeah, I do. And most of them are music without lyrics, like uh, really instrumental music, violin mostly. I really like uh, Taylor Davis. She has some video game uh, music in violin and that's what set my mind to the, to the right place. Um, I'm quite Taylor eclectic Davis, for music. I'm but, that down. Yeah, I'm quite eclectic for music, but this is the one that's like silver bullet for, for focusing. Uh, I, have a, I have an instrumental playlist and I also have a, a, a violin playlist from Samantha. And, it's, and it's, it's really good to listen to. Like if I'm really focusing on something so much that I don't even uh, want lyrics, then that's what I listen to. So it's pretty cool. But I, I didn't know about Taylor Davis, so I'll check it out. 
Okay. Uh, speaking of focus is, do you have any strategies like, because, uh, sometimes like sometimes it's super easy for me to work and I'm just, you know, going along, but other times if I'm, you know, I'm tired or I'm burned out or, I, or I'm working on something that's like super tedious. Uh, sometimes it's hard to focus. Do you ever have that? Do you have strategies? Yeah, I actually use a couple things. Uh, I really like using Pomodoro technique, which is basically you focus for 15 minutes stop for five to have a break. Uh, I think really helps me to break down the problem in small pieces because for me, when the problem is overwhelming, it's very hard to start. I just like procrastinate so much. So I just take something I can do in 15 minutes, give some some progression and then come back after few, five minutes. So this is something that helps. I hover duck a lot with uh, some some developers from my team, sometimes just yeah, you know, sometimes you just hop in a meeting and in the process of exp <laughs> look at that. I still have the one that you gave me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes in the process of uh, explaining what you're trying to figure out, you really break it down and and it is able to dismantle the the bomb. <laughs> we say, uh, how do you eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time. And yeah, actually, exactly. and Samantha and I have talked through big problems when, when we moved, uh, we, we, we left the United States and moved to Europe and there was like so much to do and it was really overwhelming. And so we just broke it up into little tasks and uh, Pomodoros. That's yeah, I think such good tips. I think relax and keep going, you know, uh, it, it looks daunting, but yeah, you put a console log here, one there, or you, you do a small function. Yeah, eventually it's more per increment increments is going to lead to the results. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, when did you start with angular? Uh, so I was back then I was working in Samsung and we started doing some UI it was, was actually my debut in uh, front end per se, I would say. And I had this friend uh, that he was always like, Hey, you should check angular. You should check. He was from backend. And he was, hey, you should chuck Angular. You're going to love it. And I was like, ah, come on, let it go. And and I, it was instant love, actually. It was like version 1.2, I think, still, really in the beginning. And since then, that's how I, I've done. Uh, I, I never did anything else with other framework. It was Angular JS now Angular, and yeah. That's awesome. It, cha it changed my career. It was a pivot. I really thank you, Wilson. Uh, you really helped. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you struggle with? What's your kryptonite? Anything that you're not good at? Uh, I a very, very. I have a very hard time when I cannot see exactly what I have to build. Uh, I mean, you know, when it when you you have to do something, but it's kind of a gray area. Could be a bit. I, I need to clarify very well things to be able to organize myself. If I have something that's more or less defined, it's very hard for me to navigate. Um, I think this is the biggest challenge for me. When I have a requirement that's kind of into the wild, I need to do a lot of questions and clarify that because it's very hard for me to start when things are a bit to be defined. Uh, I actually have a tip for that, if you're interested, because I've faced oh, yeah. that several times and it slows down development so much. And I've had uh, I've had teams way back in the past that I won't mention who, but sometimes when there's no direction and the management is like changing their mind over and over again, then development is just it's just a mess because I'm just changing code over and over. Uh, and so if I don't have any clear picture, I actually have learned to just make the wireframe myself and give it to the client and then have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And just like, if they don't, if I don't have a wireframe, I'll just draw it. I'll just take a piece of paper and draw it and say, this is what it's going to look like. And just, and then have the conversation. And, and hopefully if it's like an ongoing client that they'll start doing that themselves and giving me a wireframe, but I'll just do it because even though like, I would rather them do it for me and give it to me, but it's still faster than doing the live code and then because that's what they do is mm -hmm. if you go ahead and build it and then some clients just look at it like a wireframe and they start going okay now once the code and once the active working code is all hooked up then they're like okay can you now move this and yeah so wireframes. yeah that that's that's a very good tip taking the initiative yeah all right anything else anything else that you uh that you have a hard time with 
No, I think I think this this is something that's very really tricks me, uh, especially in a in a startup where agile is the is the same means the same of requirements that change every day. Mm-hmm. It's very tricky. You after you implemented something, someone just come and say, "Hey, but th- that's not exactly what I wanted." Yeah, but you didn't tell me. <laughs> so, I think this is the biggest challenge I face. There was a job I had a long time ago where we had a, a project manager on the dev team, and she was very, she was very assertive. And uh, I thought she was a little scary at first, but then I realized like she protects us because she won't let anyone interrupt us. And it's and it was it was really cool. Uh, so sometimes having a having a scrum master is super helpful for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, next, how do you define job satisfaction? Like, what what really makes you super feel very warm as a developer? I think it's uh, I think two two key things uh, make make my, the difference. Um, I think recognition. So if I really I, I'm I'm the kind of professional that really likes to wear the t-shirt of the company, really give my blood and just go full on and, and, and do everything possible to the product to, to succeed. But I need, I need to have some feedback that, yeah, I'm seeing that you're doing, you, you are a good boy. You know, um, <laughs> I, I know, I know a lot of people that don't need this at all, but in my case, I really like to see that my, I'm going to get invested anyways. I just want yeah. someone to say, Hey, uh, I, I see that you're really doing this, and the second point would be progression. I feel, and this is for almost everything in life. I think you have to feel that your job, your project, your company, or anything is going somewhere. Because if you have the feeling that doesn't matter what you do, you're always in the same place. I think this kills any any kind of motivation. So I would say progression and recognition. Of course, a good salary is important, but these two mm-hmm. things in the long run make a big difference. That's very insightful. Thank you. All right. Last question. What are you working on these days? What are you excited about? Uh, a bunch of things. I'm very excited about NGXS, uh, but I think this is given. Uh, we, I'm really pushing some, some things in NGXS. Uh, would like to push more. Uh, and I also work in an analytics product in my, in my current company. And recently, uh, I started as an Alt0 uh, ambassador. So I'm coming up with uh, a small uh, article about it. Uh, how so to you're integrate working with uh, Sam Juline. Exactly. So I'm trying to learn a bit of dev hell with him because he's, so he's, a, he's a myth on, on the area. Uh, and the, the idea is um, I'm looking for writing more. So I, I'm coming up with this little blog where I'm going to just write to myself or few few people just to get in the habit of writing more. Uh, maybe publishing Angular Nation as well. Of course, why not? And and the thing that I'm, I am I got my eyes right now is NGXS and possibly integrating with uh, Out0. So uh, they have an example for other libraries, and I just want to to have an energy access uh, version there. I have a suggestion if you uh, if you're able to get that done, uh, maybe in more than one language too. Yeah, I mean not that like the documentation and examples because mm-hmm. uh, I know we have uh, a couple of other channels and and uh, it would be great to have some documentation in other in other languages too. Can I can Portuguese. I can definitely do Portuguese, English. How maybe. many languages do you speak? Uh, so I'm I'm very focused right now on Russian because my my fiance is Russian, and I could say that I speak a little bit. It's my fifth language. So of course I have uh, Portuguese as native, Spanish because it's very close to Portuguese. So a bit of study that I did was enough to, to speak a little bit. Uh, French because I I live in Belgium and I lived in France before, and and Russian, yeah. That's so cool. English, I don't, I don't need to say, right? Like we use English every day. Like it's, yeah. it's almost impossible not to know English if you are a developer. Very tricky. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. This was super fun, and uh, it was great talking to you. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. I know. Bye bye. Bye bye.